dear learner in this episode we are going to learn about tourism resources under that natural resources this includes five subheadings they are introduction mountains and hills canyons and caves waterfalls and wildlife when we go for tourism we have to see something experience it and then enjoy it the place the item the experience we enjoy may be tangible or intangible we call that as tourism product product in general sense can be an object a site an activity an event or a person which satisfies the needs of an individual the satisfaction can be physiological or psychological the requirements of each individual differs the motivation which will pursue a person to opt for a holiday also differs the motivation for undertaking travel may be pleasure recreation health education religious adventure business service special interest to see friends and relatives or for any other reason tourism product is a combination of several ingredients and services the product which satisfies the psychological and physiological requirements of a tourist during his or her entire trip to places and other than usual place of residence or business is called tourism product or tourism resources tourism resource is something that satisfies the tourist needs various travel motivations give shape to different tourism resources they may be tangible or intangible intangible resources are those that cannot be seen and touched but it can only be experienced music dance paintings other artwork customs traditions etc belong to this category tangible resources are those that can be seen touched and experienced it may be further classified into natural and cultural cultural resources refers to those monuments or group of buildings and sites aesthetic archaeological scientific ethnological or anthropological value natural resources refers to those outstanding physical biological geological formations habitats of threatened species of animals and plants areas with aesthetic values etc natural resources are given by nature to a particular region or country like mountains hills valleys rivers waterfalls seas forest wildlife etc natural resources may further be classified into three categories the first one land forms like mountains hills valleys deserts canyons caves glaciers beaches lakes backwaters islands lagoons etc second one flora and fauna this includes vegetation species plantations flowers and trees lush green landscape biosphere reserve forest national park and wildlife sanctuaries etc third one is climate this includes tropical locations monsoon ice mountain ranges and different seasons second is mountains and hills these places are of great attractions for tourists the great himalayas the western ghats vindhya mountains titles mountains alpha top of europe etc are great attractions for tourists the tourist prefers for different locations for different purpose under that the first one is himalayan mountain ranges himalayas are the mountain ranges that spreads to 
10 states of India namely Imachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttaranchal and Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh and hill ranges of Assam and West Bengal. The region is responsible for providing perennial water supply source for most of the North Indian states and it contains varied flora and fauna. Indus, Sutlej, Kali, Koshi and Brahmaputra originates from Himalayas. The main Himalayan ranges are Pir Panjal range, Dauldar range, Jeskar range, Ladakh range and East Kurkuram range. Everest is the highest peak in the Himalayan mountain ranges as well as in the world. The Himalayan mountain ranges attract mainly adventure tourists from all over the world. Next is Title Mountains. It is a mountain of Alps located in the border between cantons of Obwaldan and Beam. It is the highest summit of mountain ranges north of system pass between the Bimis outer land and central Switzerland. It is accessible from Engelberg on the north side and it is famous as a world's first revolving cable car system to claim the mountain above the glacier. Next is top of Europe. It is listed by UNESCO as a world heritage site. Jengfrajo boasts Europe's highest train station. There is a train to top the Europe from Grindwallet which is spectacular trip to Jengfrajo. Once at the top, tourists immerse themselves in the fascinating ice, snow and rocks. There is an ice palace at the top to see. Next is Western Ghats. It is also known as Sahyadri mountain ranges running parallel to the western coast of the Indian peninsula. It is located entirely in India. It is also UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is one of the eight hotspots of the world. It is known for its biodiversity. The Western Ghats run north to south along with the western edge of the Deccan Plateau. It has separated the plateau from narrow coastal plain called Konkan along the Arabian Sea. The rain starts near the border of Gujarat and Maharashtra and it runs approximately 1600 kilometers through six Indian states namely Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. There are innumerable and unlimited number of hills and mountains all over the world which are natural tourism resources. These natural resources attracts millions of tourists all over the world. Next is natural rock formation. Yana is a small village in Uttar Kannada district of Karnataka state. It is known for its unusual rock formation. It is located in the Sahadri mountain range of Western Ghats. Dr. Francis Buchan, a British official of the East India Company, survived this site in 1801. At that time, he found this place and thereafter which is known for its evergreen forest as it has become a place for tourists and there are two unique rock outcrops near this village. The massive rock outcrops are known as Bhairaveshwara Shikara and Mohini Shikara. The first one is 390 feet height and the second one is 300 feet. These two rocks must have been formed million years ago. Now it has become a place for trekking and other adventure tourism activities. Next is Thar Desert. It is the 18th largest subtropical deserts in the world. It is 800 kilometers long and 400 kilometers wide. It spreads over four Indian states namely Rajasthan, Gujarat, Haryana and Punjab. 60% of the area is in Rajasthan. A part of it is extended 
up to Pakistan. The Thar Desert also known as Great Indian Desert. It is a large arid region in the north which lies on the western part formed natural boundary between India and Pakistan. It is a great tourist attraction in Rajasthan. Large number of both domestic and international tourists visits this desert every year. Third one, canyons and caves. A gorge or canyon is a deep ravine between pairs of escarpments or cliff and is most often carved landscape by the erosive activity of a river over geological time scales. Rivers have a natural tendency to cut through underlying surfaces which will eventually wear away rock layers to lessen their own pitch slowing their water giving enough time. Their bottoms will gradually reach a baseline elevation which is the same elevation as the body of water which will eventually drain into this action when the river source and the mouth are at different base elevation. It will form a canyon. This occurs particularly through the regions where softer rocks layer intermingled with harder rock layers which is more resistant to weathering. A canyon may also refers to a rift between two mountain peaks such as those in ranges including rocky mountains, the Alps, the Himalayas or the Andes, usually a river or a stream and the erosion carve out such splits between the mountains. Next is Indus George. The Indus George Canyon is the deepest canyon in the world. The Indus River passes gigantic gorges 4500 to 5200 meters deep near in the Nanga Parbat Massif. In the Nanga Parbat region, the massive amount of erosion due to Indus River following the capture and resounding through that area is the reason to bring middle and lower crustal to the surface. Next is Grand Canyon. In Arizona state of the United States of America, there is a natural geological formation of layered bands of red rock. It spreads to 277 miles length, 10 miles width and 1 mile depth. It is one of the great attractions of people who visits United States of America. Catherine Gorg or Nitmiluk National Park. It covers a vast area escarpment country including gorges carved from the ancient sandstone. There are hundreds of canyons spread throughout the world. They provide a natural tourist attractions. Next is coastal lines and beaches. There are countries which entirely depends upon beaches for their survival. They attract large number of tourists. For example, tourism activities in Maldives contributes over 90% of its GDP. It has only beaches and nothing else. It has developed different varieties of water sports where the tourist enjoys apart from swimming. Similarly, beaches of Spain also attracts large number of tourists. Next is caves. Cave is a hollow space in the ground, especially a natural underground space large enough for human to enter. Caves are formed naturally by the weathering of rocks and often extended deep into underground. A cavern is a specific type of cave naturally formed in soluble rock with the ability to grow speleothems. Caves are found throughout the world but only a portion of it is explored. Cave system is widely skewed towards countries where caving has been popular for many years. As a result, there are good number of caves documented in Europe, North America, Asia, Africa, United States of America, Europe and Africa. 
there are different types of caves. First one is solutional caves. These are most frequently occurring caves and such caves are formed in rocks that is soluble such as limestone, chalk, dolomite, marble, salt etc. Next is lava caves. These are called primary caves as they are formed in the rock formation stage only. Next is sea caves. These are formed along the coast around the world. A special type is littoral caves which are formed by wave action in zones of weakens in sea cliffs. Often these weaknesses are false, they may also be dikes or bedding plane contents. Some wave cut caves are now above sea level because of later uplift. Next is corrosional or erosional caves. These caves are those that form entirely by following steams carrying rocks and other sediments. These can form in any type of rocks. Next is glacier caves. These are formed by melting ice and flowing water within and glaciers. Those caves are influenced by very slow flow of ice tends to collapse again. Glacier caves are sometimes misidentified as ice caves though the latter term is reserved for bedrock caves that contain year round ice formation. Next is standstone caves. These are found in cliffs and are the result of erosion. Next is gypsum caves. These caves are formed in gypsum by the action of the running water. And the fourth one rivers and waterfalls. These are one of the natural tourism resources which attracts large number of tourists. There are large number of waterfalls but a few attracts large number of both domestic and international tourists. First one is Niagara Falls. It is in the city of Niagara country in New York state of United States of America. It is a small town with a population of about 50,000 as per 2010 census. This town is adjacent to Niagara River. Niagara Falls is located in the international border of United States of America and Canada. It is the collective name given for three waterfalls that straddle the international border of USA and Canada, specifically between the province of Ontario and New York. They form southern end of Niagara George. From three waterfalls are Horseshoe Falls, the American Falls and the Bridalwell Falls. The Horseshoe Fall is on the Canadian side, the American Falls entirely American side separated by Goat Island. The smaller Bridalwell Falls is also on the American side separated from other waterfalls by Luna Island. About 6 million cubic feet of water falls per minute but the height is 188 feet only. It is one of the greatest attractions for tourists who visits United States of America. Next is Victoria Falls. It is a waterfall in the southern Africa on the Zimbezi River at the border of Zambia and Zimbabwe. David Livingstone, a Scottish missionary, is believed to have been the first European to view Victoria Falls on 16-11-1855 from what is known as Livingstone Island, one of the two land masses in the middle of the river, immediately upstream from the falls on the Zambian side, while it is neither highest nor widest fall in the world but it is classified as the largest based on its combined width of 1708 meters and height is 108 meters resulting in the world's largest sheet of falling water. Victoria Falls represents a spectacular sight of inspiring beauty and grandeur. 
its columns of spray can be seen from miles away. At the height of rainy season, more than 500 million cubic meter of water falls over a width of nearly 2 kilometers into a gorge over 100 meter below. Next is Igozu Falls. These are the waterfalls located where Igozu River tumbles over the edge of state of Parana. They are the largest waterfall system in the world. Numerous islands along 2.7 kilometers long edge divide the falls into many separate waterfalls and cataracts varying between 60 to 82 meters high. The number of these small waterfalls fluctuates from 150 to 300 depending upon the water level. Approximately half of the river flows falls into a long and narrow chasm called Devil's Throat. The magnificent spectacles of these 275 individual drops has owed tourists from all over the world. Next is Jog Falls. The most thrilling spectacle in the entire western guards of Karnataka is the world famous Jog Falls. The river Sharavati taking a spectacular leap into a chasm from a height of 900 feet forms the highest waterfall in Asia. The river hut is four distinct cascades. The first one is the grandest known as Raja. A few hundred feet away down with a thunderous gush, Raja is joined by Roarer, leaping down with a great speed and in that series, the third cascade is a rocket and the fourth gliding away in a feminine grace is Rani. The falls are at their best during monsoon with arching rainbows coloring the mist. It gives an amazing experience to the tourist. The effect is greatly heightened by the beautiful region around which is covered with thick vegetation. Next is wildlife tourism. Wildlife tourism is a type of tourism where tourists go to natural areas to watch wild animals, birds, insects, etc. Wildlife tourism encompasses a wide range of activities including watching the wild animals in their natural habitat, bird watching, whale watching, etc. It is generally the term that technically covers both flora and fauna, although in popular usage, Wildlife is mostly used to refer to animals in wilderness. The term is commonly used to cover all types of animals including all kinds of insects and marine life. Watching wild animals and other insects is essentially an observation activity. Although in some cases it can involve interacting with animals like touching, washing, feeding them etc. Sometimes wildlife watching may be undertaken by tourists who have purchased a specialized package such as bird watching holiday or any other package with specific objective of seeing certain kinds of wildlife. Equally, there are tourists who engage in wildlife watching as part of activities that focus on adventure in forest areas and for whom Watching animal is an added attraction and not necessarily be their motivation. Wildlife tourism is becoming a multi-million dollar business offering customized packages and safaris. Animal can be viewed in their native environment from vehicle or on foot or even from domesticated animal. Wildlife tourism encompasses non-consumptive interactions with wildlife. It has recreational aspects of adventure travel and supports the values of ecotourism and nature conservation. Next is economic support. Wildlife tourism is an important part of tourism industry. In many countries, it contributes substantially to the economic development of the region. 
for many African and South American countries, Australia, India, Canada, Sri Lanka, Maldives, etc., wildlife tourism is a major source of employment and revenue generation. It has grown substantially in recent years worldwide. There is some confusion between ecotourism and wildlife tourism. Ecotourism is a form of tourism based on the principle of conservation of natural and cultural heritage in natural areas involving local community and providing the economic benefit of tourism. Next is wildlife tourism in India. The uniqueness of Indian subcontinent lies in the diversity it offers in every aspect. India blessed with the most desperate geography and climate which provide habitat to a vivid range of flora and fauna. The incredible range of wildlife in India is a nature's gift that makes India the ideal location for wildlife tourism. Protecting the birds and animals in the zoological park is a good thing but there is nothing better than serving them exactly where they are best suited. Therefore, India houses a number of wildlife sanctuaries and national parks that help in preserving the wildlife in the natural form. Conclusion Tourism resource is something that satisfies the tourist needs. Various travel motivations give shape to different tourism resources. Some resources cannot be seen and touched but it can only be experienced. And there are some resources which can be seen, touched and experienced. It may be further classified into natural and cultural. Natural resources play a very important role in tourism and they must be taken care so that the tourism should not have negative impact on the available resources. Thank you.